After a race filled with scandal, former Speaker of Israeli Parliament Reuven Rivlin is elected as the 10th President of Israel. Fighters of the extremist group, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant seized control of Iraq's third largest city of Mosul. And the 65th and 64th FIFA Congress begins as football confronts its biggest corruption scandal over the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. FIFA President Sepp Blatter launches an attack on the British media that exposed the allegations. Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. The Israeli presidential race ended today with a winner. This election also marks the end of Shimon Peres' term that will be recorded as one of the most influential and uh, con consensus-building Israeli president in decades. But this election was different in the past, uh, from the past election were categorized as um, uninteresting but in the last months the media exposed on scandals after one scandal after another concerning the different candidates and alongside the question of what's behind the exposure of this scandals arises another question does Israel really need this position and joining me uh, tonight is Aviv Bushinsky good evening good evening former media advisor and chief of staff to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and also Ben Rorimini good evening journalist at Yediot Chaono daily newspaper and commentator thank you very much for uh, coming to our studio um, let me ask you before we will congratulate uh, Ruben Rivlin for being elected and um, wishing him really good luck about the big shoes that he's stepping into. Uh, do we really need the presidency in Israel? Well, um, look, I think that every country, uh, I guess, need a kind of symbol, not one symbol, many symbols. It's a kind of, it's unifying, it's, uh, you spoke about consensus, it's supposed to reflect uh, the consensus of the people. And I guess that somehow the balance between uh, Netanyahu, who is a kind of a right-winger, and uh, Shimon Peres, who is a kind of moderate, not a left-winger, but let's say. So the balance, somehow, I mean, even if here and there they had this kind of debates, but generally speaking, yes, it worked. Because we wanted, generally speaking, yes, we wanted someone like Shimon Peres, who is highly respected globally, to be in the front. Wow, look, that's what we are Israelis. That's what we want to be, even if, yes, you know, politically we have this kind of uh, prime minister. So this kind of balance worked. I have no idea if it's going to work now, because we are beginning a new story. Yeah, following uh, Mr. Yemini's uh, things, which I quite uh, agree, uh, you know, when Israel was established, uh, uh, the leaders wanted uh, Albert Einstein to be our president. Now we have a Nobel Prize winner who got only one vote in the parliament, and also the mass majority didn't think he is fit to be our president. I but, have to say that people never gave a chance to someone who's not coming from politics. Uh, recently, no, which, not which really. is true. Recently, no. But uh, I, I tend to agree with Mr. Yumini. Uh, we kind of need such a guy that maybe if he has an international uh, uh, presence like uh, Perez or can do some things to unite our inner population in Israel. Uh, so maybe this also kind of a balance that we need in Israel. And also, you know what, in some cases it's good that you have uh, two guys that take care of our uh, 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 big leaders and, and presidents that come to Israel. So sometimes Perez, or now Rivlin will take him hand to hand, if it's uh, President uh, Obama, for instance, or the Pope who was here recently, and sometimes Netanyahu, but sometimes it's even awkward because sometimes both of them do it, and then it looks like a Banana Republic. It's, <laughs> it definitely looks like a Banana Republic sometimes. But uh, I, before, I want to get back to what uh, you said, uh, Ben Dror. It's about we're starting a whole new story because Shimon Peres brought to this position something that I think more political agenda, more uh, political significance than any other president maybe that was in Israel. The last, let's say, marking um, point was the, the visit in the Vatican, where the Pope uh, asked for Paris to come alongside with uh, uh, Abu Mazen, with Mahmoud Abbas, and not Benjamin Netanyahu, 
basically telling to the world that he sees as Shimon Peres as the head of Israel and not Benjamin Netanyahu. How can Ruben Rivlin even start measure up to Shimon Peres? Well, th there is a kind of... Should he? Yeah. There is a contradiction between the political views of Ruben Rivlin, and we know that he belongs to the um, right part of the Likud, which is right party. Yes, we know it. Yes, we know that he is supporting a one-state solution, a kind of. So somehow, uh, some uh, left-wingers might want him to be uh, the president, and he's going to be anyway the president, because actually he is um, combining the extreme left and the extreme right, somehow, in a very strange way, I would say. But, but we have to remember that he knows exactly what does it mean, a symbol, because he is uh, one of the pupils of Jabotinsky, the F. Jabotinsky, with all what it means, which means being very ceremonial, I would say, because I guess Jabotinsky uh, used the word many times. And, and so he's going to play it. He's not going to express his, to my opinion, extreme right uh, views. He's going to be very, very, uh, Straight. So, you know, so I'm uh, not. Uh, so somehow we are supposed to be afraid, but we shouldn't be afraid have, because he's very. He's have going to be, to be very you have, you have to bear in mind that first of all, he has no power and has he, he, he just a very ceremonial position. So we don't. We shouldn't expect so much you from know, our president. You know, you're saying that he has no power, and I agree totally because it's mostly representative uh, exactly. uh, position. Exactly. But uh, let's not forget that Shimon Peres, uh, in a way, prevented Benjamin Netanyahu from at Earth attacking Iran by telling him you cannot do this. So maybe, the maybe, question is, we, maybe Ruben maybe, Rivlin doesn't maybe, have enough teeth to do maybe. it. We had all kinds of presidents in the past. We had one, like as a Weizmann, late as a Weizmann, that was very harsh to Netanyahu in his first term and a big advocate to uh, concessions with the Palestinians, and they had a big fight between them. And we had a president, uh, Itzhak Navon, which most of the people liked, and he was focusing on inner things and on the periphery, on uh, education. education. Yeah. So it depends. Uh, he'll find what to do, and he has seven years of heaven. Nobody can threat him. Nobody can expel him. He'll be there. He'll do things, maybe positive things. And I think that that's what most people want. You know, we had a very um, a, a big smearing campaign, a, a, a terrible campaign between the, the candidates with dirty stories and stuff. But at the end of the day, the one who most of the people in Israel wanted to be the president. I don't know if it's the best one, but most of the people wanted him, and he is the one who was elected. So, you know, after losing in uh, the uh, in Jerusalem twice, losing the campaign seven years ago to Paris, maybe it's about time. You know, you mentioned the, the scandals that uh, went alongside with uh, this uh, presidency uh, campaign, and, and I'm asking myself, you know, every single day we just saw another headline and another headline about another uh, candidate to the pres presidency. And it seems I have to, like, you know, it seems like a chapter from House of Cards. Uh, it's sex scandals and uh, people who have uh, hide money in their uh, safes. And, and each and every day, each and every one of them started saying, oh, I have this and I have this and I have three apartments and I have two apartments. Property declarations. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, where does it come from? Because um, it seems in a certain point that someone was managing the entire charade, the entire play, the entire show. No, but we have to understand, Israel is a democracy. Nobody, but nobody, has an exemption. Even if you are a candidate uh, uh, to the presidency, you don't have any exemption from any inquiry of the police, of the prosecution. You don't have. So, you know what? We have to be proud about it. Because I'm not sure that Israel is more corrupted than, than any other uh, democracy, but Israel... We sent but the in prime Israel, to, uh, in to jail. Yeah, but and the Israel, president. Yeah, and a president. But, but yeah, so so you know what? Yes, it happened. We cannot be proud about the fact that they are in uh, that that, that uh, uh, one previous uh, president went to jail. But mm. we have to be proud that it can happen in Israel. No, one, no one, one, no one is immune. 
the one is immune. Second, especially uh, if you are a public figure. Uh, yeah, and second, I think that some some of them were quite, if I may say, stupid for running once they, you know, they have this uh, big skeleton in the closet, and uh, you know, maybe in the future we'll have better candidates without bad stories. And if I may divert it to another angle, I think that Netanyahu made a bad gamble by not supporting fiercely uh, Ruby Rivlin, and maybe this will reflect the future relationship This is the point the that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to take you both to, because Ruben, Ruby Rivlin, we cannot say that Ruben Rivlin and Benjamin Netanyahu are the best friends ever. They're not BFFs anymore, let's say, especially after the last election. And I am waiting to see is the presidency is the biggest revenge that Ruby Rivlin can give to Benjamin Netanyahu, or he is planning another revenge for Benjamin Netanyahu? I think that uh, they'll uh, skip the revenge uh, game, uh, and also uh, Netanyahu might enjoy the fact that they still share, in a way, the same political views. Uh, but uh, it showed that Netanyahu is very vulnerable, that some of the, his uh, other figures in the, his party uh, became quite strong due to Netanyahu's uh, slight uh, slip or failure. And uh, you can even see some sense in the uh, coalition that uh, they see that maybe it's about time to really hit Netanyahu and, uh, in his stomach. Uh, but I don't think that uh, we'll see a bad relationship as we um, uh, viewed or, uh, or had uh, when Ezra Weizmann was, was the president. There is a problem. There is a problem that was even shown now in, in, in today's election and in the whole process. Because Netanyahu is not representing the Likud anymore. We have to face it. He is not. I mean, uh, whoever knows something about what happened with John Kerry, I mean, people know that actually he went far with his concessions. So he's he not. To, to, to make no, no, he, yeah, he was willing, yeah. Now, now the Likud is not with Netanyahu. The Likud is much more with uh, Ruby Rivlin. And here is a tragedy. I mean, but the people who voted for the Likud, the voters of the Likud, are with Netanyahu. They will accept everything. For so there is a contradiction. We saw it now. We saw it today. We saw it in the last months. He is going to have a problem. I'm not sure that it's going to work. I'm not sure. There, uh, I think tensions are going to be part of the game for you now. Know, uh, maybe the, this uh, presidency campaign showed uh, Benjamin Netanyahu in his most vulnerable situation ever. Um, lately, a lot of people are talking about what is happening with Benjamin Netanyahu, where are his advisors, what is going on in the prime minister's office, and how come people are talking again about Moshe Kahlon, uh, about um, Gidon Saar, about uh, people, about Yair Lapid that is coming out and being more political in the political arena and peace process. What is going on in the prime minister's office? I think it's premature to uh, find the new uh, potential leaders. Netanyahu showed you how vulnerable. There. Yeah, but uh, I sh uh, Netanyahu, we see how vulnerable he is on the one hand, but on the other hand, he's very strong, or politically very strong. I don't see anyone, at least in the near future, that will topple him. I think that this is one brick in the wall of his coalition. This is a reflect of it. Uh, but but uh, we got, we, besides this, I don't see any real uh, problems that Netanyahu might uh, face. It's true that it showed also that f recently he, he has trouble in making decisions. He didn't find the, 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 the treasury of the bank. He, he couldn't find a real candidate that he supports for a presidency and many other uh, bad mistakes that he've done. But still, he is uh, very strong as a leader. Yes, but still he is supported by the people, not by politicians, but by the people. Which, and, but the contradiction is on the table, and and he's going uh, uh, and he's going to face it. You know, with, if, yeah, with Rivlin, with his party, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what is? Uh, let me now, uh, Ben Dror. Uh, you mean give me one, um, let's say, suggestion or recommendation that you can give uh, the new president of Israel. Stay, stay out of politics. <laughs> it's a beginning, at least it's a beginning. But please stick to uh, symbols, to unifying the people, to education, to, uh, but, but welfare, don't go to politics. Don't go to politics because you're not going only uh, to help Netanyahu, you're going to help yourself, the institution of uh, 
the president, which, which is going to be quite bad for, for Israel and for him. One recommendation. I'm not going to ask you to the president, to Benjamin Netanyahu right now. Try not to fight with anyone and uh, rebuild your coalition because it might uh, tear apart very soon. Uh, gentlemen, I have to say that, um, okay, we didn't start by saying uh, Mazel Tov to the new uh, Israeli president. So, uh, we all join you. Yeah, Mazel Tov to uh, Ruby Rivlin from us from I24 News, the new Israeli president. Gen gentlemen, thank you very much for coming and uh, thank you. having evening. this discussion uh, with thank me. You. And uh, we're going out for a small break, two minutes break, and then we will be back with I24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere. Two minutes and I'll be here.